Referring to someone or something as an Achilles heel isn't always a compliment, right? It points to maybe a weakness, something that could lead to your downfall. Today, we're talking about a health problem with the Achilles itself that could certainly take you down. In this segment, sponsored by Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Center, I'm happy to welcome Dr. Brandau to tell us about it. This is Achilles tendonitis, essentially is what we're talking about today. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, I really appreciate it. All right, tell us first of all what this is. Why do people get Achilles tendonitis? Yeah, um, it's really an inflammation of the Achilles tendon and we get it, uh, we see it a lot in patients that are weekend warriors starting a new regimen or activity uh, or trying to get back to an old regimen, you know, a lot of running, maybe certain exercise, or that endurance athlete that's uh, doing a lot of mileage, whether mm. on the bike or running. Okay. You see that very commonly. So it's not just in, you know, as you get older, you're dealing with this. This is people that could be any age really struggling. Any, any age, uh, we will see it a little bit more, especially as people are staying active uh, longer, which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, we'll see that a lot more. Okay, and, and how common is it in these athletes? Are most people getting it or in people that are trying to, to do these athletics? Um, it is a fairly common um, pathology or issue that we see for okay. sure. It is certainly seen more in that athletic athlete population, but we can see it from, from kids to older adults. Okay, does it always require surgery or where do you start when it comes to treating this? Yeah. So when we start, we sort of just say, stop what you're doing that's making it hurt, right? Sure, like mom always yeah, said. the avoidance, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, a lot of it does not require surgery. We do a lot of conservative treatment, physical therapy, rehab, a lot of different activities if people are trying to stay active, like cross training. If they're runners, we'll put them on a bike or or maybe vice versa, swimming, stuff like that. Now, do they usually listen? Because I feel like sometimes people run yeah. and they love that, yeah. right? They love that and it's hard to quit it. It's, it's hard to slow a runner down, Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so we sort of look at other avenues um, where there's been some nice stuff with cycling or swimming or sure. other activities, yeah. Okay, all right, doctor. So is this different, and, and we've heard about a rupture, maybe Achilles tendon rupture. Um, is this different than that? Is that what it could lead to? Yeah, great question. So um, a rupture, we probably always hear of like, oh, did you hear about, you know, so-and-so, he popped his Achilles, or yeah. we consider that sort of a complete tear or rupture. That's usually a very specific injury, maybe a trauma that happened. Tendinitis or tendinosis is more chronic. Okay, yeah. so something they're going to be dealing with. So to that end, if they do need to get to the surgery portion of it, if, if it has gone to that, uh, what does that surgery entail? Yeah, and again, we really try to exhaust rehab and conservative treatment. But that surgery uh, entails cleaning up the area. We do it, we're trying to do it more and more through minimally invasive uh, techniques that have a faster recovery leading to really good outcomes. Okay, and then can they get back to that as far as recovery or is that usually a, hey, this happened once, let's try to, to ease up on it? Yeah, so the ruptures can take a while. We see them a lot in our professional athletes that we like to watch. Um, that can take a long time to rehab and get back together. But a lot of people, especially on the chronic issue, Achilles tendonitis, we do get them back to their sort of pre-injury levels, if you will. Okay, and, and when somebody thinks they are struggling with this, do they need to come in earlier? Can they kind of treat it maybe at home on their own before they go the path in, in meeting with an orthopedic yeah. surgeon? I think you stop what you're doing, you rest it, you start with the very simple basics of immobilizing ice, anti-inflammatories, but I would see somebody because I think we uh, are seeing in our, in our practice and as, as specialists in foot and ankle, we're seeing people a little bit too late sometimes. Okay. Um, so I think we can really help them if they're getting to us earlier. And then as far as the results, even in conservative measures, if people actually heed the warnings and they take that on, can they recover from this, you know, on their own without having to move to that? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, conservative care results are very, very high percentage. So people do very well without surgery. But if we need to, surgery is always there and a good yeah. option for them. And a good option for them. Okay, so if somebody is out there struggling too and they want to just chat and meet and see where they're at, maybe in this, is it a good idea to just make a call, come on in and have that kind of consult yeah. to kick things off? Call the office, make an appointment online, absolutely come and see us. We're one of the biggest single specialty referral uh, groups in foot and ankle in the, in the area. Yeah, and if it's any foot and ankle concern as well, you guys treat them all. We treat them all. You treat them all. Yep. All yep. right, so I want to let people know it is up on the screen. You got the website and the phone number to reach out to the Ortho Foot and Ankle Center. Thank you, Dr. Brando. Thank you.